What is the output of this Java program? Well, this kind of tricky coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So here is a base class. It has a static method display. Here is a derived class that extends base class, which has a static method named display. Next, here is a main class. It has a main method. And within the main method, the derived class object is created using a reference type as a base. And here display method is called using the base reference type. Next, the question is which display method the you know JVM will get called whether it will call the display method of base class or a derived class. The important point here is we need to understand the type of the method, whether it is a non-static or a static. So here you can see display method is a static in a base class, display method, you know, is a static in a derived class. So in Java, we cannot override the static method in a derived class or a subclass. That's why this statement will basically call a display method of a base class. So if I run this program, you can see the output base display. What is the output of this Java program? So similar kind of coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So here we have animal class. It has a sound method and it returns generic sound as a string. Next we have dog class. It extends animal class and override the sound method and return the string bark. Next in the main method we have created object of dog with a reference type animal. And here we have system.println and we are calling sound method of reference type animal. Next. The question is what is the output of this program so basically this sound method will call the overridden method in a subclass if i run this program you can see the bark is printed and this bark is coming from this sound method which is there in a doc class so here even though we are using animal as a reference type but the actual object is created using doc class so this animal is basically referring to object of this doc class that's why the sound method of doc class is called over here all right great what is the output of this Java program? So this kind of tricky coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So here is an animal class. It has an animal constructor with no arguments. Here is a dog class. It extends animal class. The dog class has a dog constructor with no arguments. Here is a main class within that main method. Within the main method, the object of the dog class is created. Now let's understand the relationship. So you can see animal is a super class, dog is a subclass. So this is basically an inheritance. So we need to understand like which constructor is get called whenever we create an object of the subclass in the inheritance. So basically whenever we create an object of the subclass, the constructor of the superclass is get called. Okay. So if I run this program, so notice here the output animal is created. So this is printed from animal superclass dog is created. So this is printed from dog subclass. Okay. So whenever we create an object of the subclass, then the constructor of the superclass is first get called and then subclass of the constructor will get called. What is the output of this Java program? Well, this kind of tricky coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So remember in Java, we cannot override the member variables from superclass to subclass. So here you can see class A is a superclass. It has a string field S and here class B is a subclass. It has a string field S. So the field names are same. Sometimes you may confuse like this S field is overridden in a subclass okay but in java we cannot override the member variables from superclass to subclass that's why this will basically print the value of this string field that is class b next system dot dot print ln super dot yes so in java super keyword is used to call the superclass constructors methods and fields so in this case super dot yes so s is basically a member variable from class a okay so super dot yes will call a superclass member variable it has a value class a so the output will be class b first and then followed by class a so if i run this program you can see class b and then class a what is the output of this java program so here is a class a it has a constructor a and it prints a here is a class b that extends class a and it has a constructor b and it prints b here is a class c that extends class b and it has a constructor c and it prints c and here is a main method and here is a object of the class c is created this program is an example for inheritance. Well, in inheritance, whenever we create object of the child class, then the parent class constructor first invoked. For example, in this case, the object of the class C is created and you can see class C extends class B. So this class B constructor first get invoked and again class B, it extends class A. Next, the control goes to the parent or super class A and this, this constructor first get invoked. That's why the value A will post print and next the value B will print and then value C will get print. If I run this program, 
you can see the output a b c 